expenditure, the pressures for expenditures are going to increase and they're going to change dramatically and we will move away from, or there will be pressures to move us away from investing in the future, in education, in roads and bridges, infrastructure, things like that, water, sewer, uh, and towards maintenance of an aging population, health care for an aging population. That's on the expenditure side. On the economic side, on the growth side, we're also expecting a slowdown in economic growth, and here's where that comes from. This decade, this decade, we will see a rapid decline in the rate of growth of our workforce a very rapid decline so that by the end of this decade, we will be at record low levels of growth of the workforce. More old people retiring, okay, let's say they stay in work another year or two. That doesn't change these numbers. And in fact, we've already included an increase in the retirement age in these numbers. We've already assumed that would happen even though it hasn't been confirmed that it has happened. We've also assumed in this a continuation of immigration work uh, uh, rates to the workforce that we've been experiencing most of this decade, so which has been a fairly robust decade for immigration. And even with those, we will be at record low levels of growth in the workforce. There's only two ways that, uh, that an economy grows. Only two ways an economy grows. Having more Federal Reserve Bank notes in your wallet is not one of them. No, those are the green things, you know. <laughs> Small dollar bills. Just read the heading on it. It's this Federal Reserve Bank note. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Ben Bernanke, but he's not the reason why the economy grows. There's only two ways an economy grows. You either increase the number of people making stuff, that's the size of the workforce, or you increase the amount of stuff each person makes, and that's productivity. About two-thirds of our growth over the last half century has been due simply to adding more folks to the workforce. That's about to come to a dramatic end. Boom. <clears throat> Stops. And by the end of this decade, all of our increase in growth is going to be due to increasing pro-worker productivity. That will be the sole source. And nor is this a Minnesota issue. This is not a Minnesota issue. This is, Minnesota is expected to see a growth in the workforce about equivalent to that of the United States. We've actually been doing a little bit better than the United States for the last decade. And, uh, and the next decade we're, we're expecting about the same level of growth. Europe's workforce has begun to decline. They have been importing massive numbers of people from other countries and it's not enough. Their workforce has begun to decline. Fertility rates have plummeted in many of the European countries. They are aging very, very rapidly. And they're getting older. Their workforce isn't growing much. And their economic growth is dramatically, dramatically slowing. Japan is older yet. Japan's workforce began to decline in the late 90s. Their population began to decline about two years ago. Japan has been in a two decade long recession. Japan has a solution to this question. And the question is this, who will take care of us when we grow old? There is actually national policy. Who will take care of us when we grow old? There are no children and they do not allow immigration into their workforce. So who will take care of them when they grow old? You might know. No? The robots. It's not a joke. Almost every medical robotic uh, improvement that you see, every innovation in medical robotics is uh, is out of that is comes out of Japan and that's the reason for this focus because they are a rapidly <coughs> aging society with an economy that is that has been in a stall for two decades now, and the only way they can see out of this is through is through uh, mechanical means with uh, with robotics. China right now is growing much, much, much faster than we are. 
Boy, I can remember when I first came to Minnesota, it was the mantra was, gee, if only we could be more like the Germans. Well, interestingly enough, the Germans were visiting Minnesota because they wanted to be more like Minnesota. But we ignored that. If only we could be more like the Germans, and then German growth really stopped. And then Japan's growth really, really picked up, and they said, gee, if we could only be more like Japan. And then Japan's growth came to a screeching halt. And now it's, gee, China is beating us at everything. Wow, look at China. Double-digit rates of growth of China. Wow, look at them go. China has a problem. It's a huge problem. They're younger than we are, and they're growing very, very rapidly right now because their workforce is increasing at a torrid rate and their per worker productivity is increasing very, very, very rapidly, and that all comes to a screeching halt in about five years. In five years, they will be older than we are, and by 2017, their workforce begins to decline. China must, must achieve a moderate st uh, European standard of living by that time, or they've got major problems with unmet expectations and, and internal unrest. They are in a panic. Right now, China has their their hands full. Right now, we don't really want to be like China. And then that means for the rest for the workforce of the world, where are workers going to come from? Well, it's going to come from the rest of Asia. But you know, India is developing, and India is right about at the tipping point right now. And Korea, South Korea is already beyond the tipping point, and and Taiwan's already beyond the tipping point, and Philippines are already beyond the tipping point in terms of aging of the workforce. That really leaves Indonesia and a couple of other countries, uh, but there's still some source of growth in the workforce. South America or Latin America, uh, Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, Colombia, Venezuela are already at or near the tipping point as is Mexico and Brazil is rapidly approaching it. That will be a, is still a source of potential labor, but the source is beginning to dry up. That leaves only one other place in the world that is a source for, uh, for uh, uh, workforce growth into the future, and that is Africa. And Minnesota is changing. People are immigrating here. People are moving here from all over the world, from all over the world. And we are changing as a society. Now, the main reason why people move is jobs. That's the main reason why people will are willing to cross significant boundaries and brave all sorts of hardships and terrors and things like that and uncertainties in their life simply for a job. And Minnesota is still a land of opportunity. We are still a land of opportunity. And so we have people coming here, and we have increasing numbers of people, and it's right now it's about 17 to 18,000 people a year immigrate to Minnesota. And we are beginning to change as a state, but we are still one of the least diverse states in the country. By comparison to North and South Dakota and Iowa, we're really diverse. <clears throat> we're beginning to change. Our most diverse county, our most racially and ethnically diverse county is Ramsey County. This is the most diverse county in the state. It's less diverse than the national average. It's less racially and ethnically diverse than the national average. Ramsey County will catch the nation up in a few years, but still will be at about the national average. 